Garment fit is one of the biggest challenges facing the fashion industry and even more so for brands and retailers hoping to expand their businesses into new global markets. Get it right and you lay down the foundations for future success. Get it wrong and you're faced with lost sales, markdowns, consumer frustration and costly product returns. Our webinar will look at how well controlled product development can help tackle the problem and the role that smart technology has to play in achieving this by combining pattern making solutions with built in grading and interactive 3D prototyping. The presentation is being sponsored by Lectra and hosted by Lectra's UK marketing manager, Yenny Murphy, and solutions expert, Mark Powell. Yenny is responsible for ensuring that customers and prospects are kept up to date on industry solutions that enable fashion companies to optimize the collection development process while saving time and costs. Mark worked as a creative and production pattern maker, grader and marker maker for over 20 years before joining Lectra. As a fashion solution specialist, he is involved during the initial audit process to gain an understanding of a customer's needs and propose a suitable solution. Mark is on hand during implementation and also trains staff members on how to use the technology correctly and efficiently. For anyone who's not familiar with Lectra, the company has 40 years experience in fashion and apparel and provides a complete spectrum of design, development, production and product lifecycle management solutions. From first creative spark to final product, Lectra's services address an end-to-end -end process the company has 23,000 customers in more than 100 countries. With the introductions done, I'm now going to hand you over to Yenny Murphy. Hello, and welcome to Achieve the Perfect Fit webinar. I hope you can uh, all hear us. Um, sorry, we had some technical problems earlier. We couldn't hear you, but uh, I think we're all good to go now. Just before we start, in case the image is not filling your whole screen, please right-click on the image and select View to choose the Fit Viewer option. Today we would like to talk about challenges the fashion industry is facing, both in general and more specifically in obtaining the perfect fit for, for customers. We will also be discussing how important it is to have control of your own patterns and how technology can help you with this. We will include some examples from our customers to see how they are coping with these challenges. So, let's start by talking a little bit about why fashion is different from other industries. First of all, the number of stock keeping units is enormous when we have to consider all styles, sizes, color options and so forth. We all know that fashion is very competitive and this makes customers more choosy about where they shop. Getting the fit of the styles on offer correct is therefore extremely important if brands and retailers want to keep their customers happy. Long gone are the days of two main collections a year, spring, summer and autumn, winter collections. Now innovation is really constant. Making sure that there are new styles on offer every time a customer walks into the store has also become a key goal. And this has meant that a faster turnover of styles is needed, requiring very quick decision making during the product development stage and efficient system setup to make sure stores, are, stores have everything they need at all times. The challenges to worldwide distribution is also becoming increasingly complex due to multiple sourcing models and wider distribution networks. The impact this all has on the product development cycle is enormous. The whole process must speed up to supply the demands of the consumer and many companies are also expanding their offers into new territories to safeguard profitability of their business activities. This means that even more styles have to be produced quicker than before 
placing a big emphasis on sampling time. It is important to ensure that all styles are relevant to the target audience, however sampling processes are currently far too time consuming. Several collections need to be managed at the same time and there is no room for delays. All this can put enormous pressure on departments working on product development, like design and pattern making, so any technology that can help us is usually well received. So let's take a, look, a closer look at a garment fit and why this is so important. Here are a few recent statistics on consumers' buying habits. A huge 90% of women get annoyed by the lack of consistency in garment sizing and fit in the high street. This is looking at the differences between fits between different stores and even sometimes different styles in the same store. 34% of consumers can't rely on the information provided about the fit of styles on fashion retailers' websites. And 85% of consumers would definitely buy from a brand again if they are happy with the fit of items they have bought previously. Now this all tells us that achieving a good consistent fit across all product lines should be very high on any fashion brand's long-term objectives. However, the statistics show that we are not quite there yet and things need to be improved. So let's look at what sort of things can go wrong in product development resulting in poor fit. Now a large percentage of fashion companies rely on designers' technical specifications which are sent to suppliers. Suppliers then produce the garment based on these measurements provided by the brand. However, is the quality of technical information always accurate and sufficient? If specification sheets are inaccurate, or if there is not enough flexibility allowed to the pattern makers in the translation into a pattern from the specification sheet, then the resulting garment may fit badly or be unflattering, or in many cases both, as you can see in this example. On this occasion, the pattern cutter has relied too literally on what is written on the specification sheet, as suppliers often do for cultural or management reasons, rather than use experienced pattern knowledge to see that these patterns just won't fit well. A couple of weeks later, the style arrives to the fitting session, and everyone can see that the fit is terrible and needs to be modified drastically, or sometimes due to time constraints, needs to be dropped, like on this occasion. This, of course, is costly in both time and money. Another regularly observed issue is when brands work with suppliers abroad or when they sell their product abroad. Misunderstandings during the product development stage and during the production stage can often happen when there is a difference of language or culture. For example, body sizes and shapes are very different in the Far East compared to European countries. And without having been to Europe to see the target audience, it may be very difficult to visualize what the fit would be like on a customer with a completely different physique and body shape. Not understanding differences in body shape and fit between different target countries is also a big problem when selling to international customer bases. Dutch people are generally very tall, for example, whereas, exa whereas Italians are more petite. Some Western European countries have growing problems of obesity resulting in requirements for very large sizes. So we need to look at ways to improve the process and improve our cultural understanding. If basic blocks are not regularly kept up to date to accurately reflect the fit needed by your target customer, or worse, not use at all, it can be very difficult to ensure consistency across different styles and product areas. Having control over the creation of patterns is key to making sure that they are created correctly with a suitable basic block for the target market. This control will also enable streamlining of the product development phase wherever possible to speed up the number of styles developed 
as basic blocks can always be used as a starting point. So, what do we need to do to meet these challenges? Let's go back to the basics. Firstly, it's really, really important to know your customers very well. You must understand their morphology, age and lifestyle, and it's important to understand how to make clothes that fit them well. Which of these shapes represent your target market? Are you designing for curvy ladies or very slim target customers? Or are you trying to fit most body shapes with different styles in your collection? Knowing this basic information will help you a great deal to ensure your fit and marketing is all directed at the correct market segment. We will show you later on in our presentation how mannequins can be customized to your target audience. As we have seen, if you always use basic blocks that have been developed for particular target markets when creating new styles, you can ensure a good, consistent fit between collections. Basic blocks also save time compared to draping directly on the stand, as much of the initial work to create the shape has already been carried out, as well as tried and tested. It almost goes without saying that having an experienced pattern making team who have the flair and technical knowledge to create beautiful styles is imperative if you want to offer clothes that not only look good, but fit really well also. However, not enough emphasis is always put in the pattern room, ensuring well-trained, constantly updated, experienced pattern cutters are employed. It is impossible tr to translate even the best design ideas into well-fitting garments without experienced pattern makers. Here is an example from one of our customers of many years, Warehouse, where Maggie Stott, their senior pattern cutter, has modified one of her existing basic blocks to create a pattern for this dress. As you can see, a good uh, technical knowledge of fit, coupled with a flair for design, enabled Maggie to produce a great fit right from the start. Using digital pattern making software speeds up this process as well uh, as as all patterns can be stored on a computer, modified on screen, and shared instantly by email. Luxury women's wear designer Maria Kratzvogel uses Lectra's design package to create styles and prints, and Lectra's pattern cutting solution to make her patterns. Here is what she has to say. I have basic blocks that I use time and time again, but which I modify for each model. I save a lot of time by doing things this way. I have always felt it, it was important for me to be very involved in the pattern making process as that really is the basis of all my designs and a huge part of my creativity. Using Modaris has really facilitated the growth of my business. It's more efficient and yet allows me to remain hands-on. One of the key challenges for all fashion brands is to reduce costs to be able to be competitive while still making a profit. This is challenging especially as the cost of raw materials, fuel for distribution and other related costs are going up. Because of this challenge to reduce costs, many retailers have decided to outsource pattern rooms to their suppliers. However, this sometimes comes at a cost, as many ideas are misunderstood, resulting in excessive sampling. If you have the full control of your pattern room in-house, you can ensure that the quality and fit of your garments meet your customers' expectations, and development times can be reduced as alterations and decisions can be made easier and quicker. So here is a short demonstration showing you how this problem can be tackled by making the pattern making and alterations phases of product development much quicker and much easier. Our advanced pattern making solution has unique dependencies between pattern pieces so that if one piece is altered then all dependent pieces follow automatically. Now this is unique in the marketplace and revolutionizes pattern making. Dependencies between adjacent lines can allow alterations to be replicated automatically to all related pieces.
And as you can see here, if the master line shape is altered, then the slave line moves to ensure the required distance is always maintained. Each end of the slave line can be a different measurement if necessary as well to create different shapes. Any grading added to points on the master line also gets automatically copied to the slave line, making grading much, much quicker. The two-way link to the measurement chart also provides many benefits, like being able to update patterns directly from the measurement chart and also applying grading from the measurement chart. Now this link with measurements also allows different pieces that are sewn together to be linked so that if one piece is altered, the other piece will be altered as well so that they will always be able to be sewn together. These tools can greatly speed up and simplify the pattern making and development process. Now another aspect of the use of good processes combined with advanced product development solutions is the enhanced ability to connect quickly and easily to other departments in the company or even other companies abroad. We are living in a world where we all need to be connected to our colleagues, our suppliers and our partners via the internet as much as possible. Storing all the data you use at work digitally enables you to do this just by clicking a button. This acceleration of data transfer is becoming more important as deadlines become increasingly tighter. So, with all this in mind, let us take a look at the most recent development in pattern making technology, 3D prototyping. Now, 3D prototyping combined with flat pattern making is revolutionizing the pattern room. There are many benefits to using 3D prototyping technology early on in the product development cycle. As mannequins can be created to suit particular body shapes, a much more accurately fitting pattern can be developed right from the start, which can reduce the amount of physical samples needed dramatically. Being able to visualize and modify colors, design details and fabric placements on screen together with the design team, enables quick and easy decision making, saving huge amounts of time and money. As you can imagine, there is also a big environmental impact. Carbon footprints will be reduced from less sample shipping and less wasted materials to make mock-ups and unnecessary fit samples. 3D simulations give an accurate visual representation of the style created from an actual pattern as well, enabling pattern makers and designers to work together to make sure the style works from a fit and a design perspective. As we know, only a fairly small percentage of design ideas actually go into production. It's far easier and cheaper to drop unwanted designs at this stage than after producing a physical sample. So this video shows you how the virtual mannequins in Lectra's 3D pattern development solution can be set up to represent the exact shape of your target consumer. Now there are many different measurements that can be altered to create your mannequin. And as the mannequins are saved as external files, you can create your own library of mannequins for different customers or different body types if you wish. It's also possible to change the posture of your mannequin in a variety of ways 
to make the body shape as accurate as possible depending on your target customer. As we know with age, even if our basic size would be the same, our posture and muscle tissue changes and gravity starts taking effect. This is important to take into consideration in your fit models or virtual mannequins. Now once you've saved your mannequin, different postures can be applied for a range of different fitting, fitting situations like raising arms to the front or the side or different sitting and standing positions for fitting trousers or skirts. One benefit is to be able to see if a print placement works well in 3D and to make sure it is the correct size and placement to make sure that fabric is correctly printed. On top of the visual decisions that can be made, it is also great for evaluating costing. When working with both pattern and marker making solutions, you can automatically see the cost impact on printed fabrics when you do your lay plan. You may choose to change the print or the scale of the print to keep fabric cost down, whilst verifying that it still meets the designer's acceptance. Testing different ideas, visual effects or fit alterations are also very quickly and easily done in 3D to enable designers to make fast design decisions on styles that are being developed. The great thing is that changes that are made to the 3D mannequin are directly applied to the 2D patterns and this truly facilitates and speeds up the final pattern alterations. Designers can also test ideas for new styles by applying design elements to previous styles. The solution holds an extensive library of pockets, buttons, stitches and other embellishments that can be used and applied onto the 3D mannequin. Again, these can be viewed on the 2D patterns, which is once again a huge time saver when making the final alterations. The results from our customers who have moved to 3D prototyping have been overwhelmingly positive. Many customers are reporting that they have been able to completely take out the mock-up stage of their pattern making process and customers have been able to reduce the number of samples to just one. Some have even said that they haven't needed any physical samples at all for certain styles. 3D facilitates the whole product development process. Making fewer fit samples not only saves time, saves time, but it also saves a lot of unnecessary expense, as I'm sure you can imagine. We would now like to show you a short demonstration on how different colour and fabric options can be applied, viewed, changed and validated on screen. So, a full Pantone library is embedded into the solution and it's very quick and easy to apply colour to make your simulation look really realistic. You can also apply prints, weaves or knits in many different file formats. Repositioning the print, either on the 3D simulation or on the pattern pieces, allows you to place prints, especially placement prints, correctly. You can also ensure the print is the correct scale or rotate the print if required. As you can see, the system will automatically tile your print to cover all the related pattern pieces, in this case the whole garment. You can also apply top stitching, embroideries, zips and buttons to make your simulations look as realistic as possible. All options and changes can be saved and viewed together with your team to make quick design choices on how to proceed with your style. So another big challenge to retailers is managing the fit of whole size ranges. People's bodies changing and consumers expect brands and retailers to keep up with these changes and reflect them in the fit of their styles. 
When a retailer or brand is selling their ranges in many countries, this task can become even more complicated. This is when 3D prototyping can be used to validate fit throughout the size range. Designers can also decide which sizes they wish to produce in each style by seeing which styles work for each size range. Sometimes a style may look good on larger sizes but not on smaller sizes, for example, or vice versa. Designers may choose to make modifications to larger sizes. For example, here they may choose to make the sleeves a little longer on a larger size or make the dress a little bit shorter on the smaller sizes. It's easy to modify and save different grading rules as well and this may be very applicable when working across different areas with different morphologies. Fashion companies can have a library of scanned-in fit models or 3D avatars to test the styles for each market. This helps to guarantee the integrity of the design for each size. So now let's take a look at how 3D can help pattern makers obtain the best fitting pattern they can before any samples are produced. There are many different visualization options in the 3D environment. You can see all the pattern pieces in different colors, highlight the seam lines, make pattern pieces transparent or invisible, or even make the mannequin invisible. There are also functions like this one to show you how big the garment is compared to the mannequin. The blue areas show the garment is larger than the mannequin, so it's perfectly all right but yellow and red areas would show that the garment is too tight so must be altered. It's also possible to draw seam lines on or a new hemline like is shown here. And all these lines can be updated in a 2D environment to uh, update your pattern. If you want to cut away the fabric to see how this modification would look, you can. The two-way link between 3D and 2D allows you to quickly update your 3D simulation after a modification to the 2D pattern as well. Kapal, a Swedish fashion retailer and one of our customers for many years, has seen a great reduction in samples. They have said, initially we made several physical samples. With Madaris we can reduce that to just one sample. We get a good fit very quickly and we save time and money. So now, before we move into the question and answer session, we would like to share a little bit more information about Lectra, who we are and what we do. Lectra has a long history in fashion. We are actually celebrating our 40th birthday this year. Lectra was founded in 1973 in France and very soon launched the first pattern cutting solution to the market. We then expanded the range into design solutions and by 1986, Lecter was already the world leader in CAD and decided to enter the manufacturing market by introducing our manufacturing solutions, including software and hardware. Our first PLM and 3D prototyping solutions were launched in 2007 and have been developed together in collaboration with our customers ever since. This year we are emphasizing the launch of Lecter Fashion Platform, which helps to connect the whole product development process from design concept to production on one single platform, improving data management and sharing, while saving considerable <coughs> amount of time and money. We are a truly international company and have close to 1,400 employees and our 30 subsidiaries around the world. With our headquarters, local teams and five international call centers, we ensure that our customers, who are currently present in over 100 different countries, get the help and support they need. 
As part of our offering, we provide consultancy for auditing uh, correct current processes and proposing improved workflows together with appropriate technology solutions. Our qualified teams train all our customers on our solutions, but our services don't finish with the implementation. We ensure a long-term support and work in partnership with our customers to ensure that customers get the full return on investment from their solutions. Having been in the industry for 40 years, working together with some of the biggest fashion houses in the world and employing people directly from the industry, we can ensure that we really understand fashion. We, we're proud to work in close partnership with our customers, not just providing them with fashion solutions, but also working closely together on our future roadmap to ensure that the solutions respond to the customers' constantly evolving business challenges. Here you can see an example of some of our fashion customers we work with. Vector also works very closely with the education sector to ensure that the next generation of fashion professionals have the required technical skills when they enter the job market. We currently work with nearly 900 schools and universities around the world, obviously um, supplying technology to their courses, but also organize joint industry projects competitions, and networking conferences to increase information sharing. We also try to link our education partners and customers together wherever possible. Here is one excellent example of a 3D project that I would like to show you by one of our privileged partners, Amsterdam Fashion Institute, Institution.
sure you are in agreement with them uh, with us that uh, that it's an incredible project and what the students have been able to achieve is very very talented. We have now come to the end of our presentation and I would like to thank you very much for your attention uh, and now we can start the question and answer session so I'd like to pass pass you back to uh, Leone and I hope we can hear uh, Leone this time. <laughs> Yes, thank you. Thank you, Yenny and Mark, um, for an excellent presentation. Um, well. for, those of, for those of you who were unable to hear my introduction at the beginning of the webinar, I'm Leonie Barry, Managing Editor of Just Style, and I apologize again for the technical problems, but I hope you'll agree that um, Yenny and Mark have made it very clear that 3D technology has the potential to revolutionize product development, as well as deliver far more consistent fit and reduced time to market. As Yenny says, we're now going to move on to the question and answer session. We'll do our best to get through everything in the time we have, but any questions we don't manage to answer today will be followed up by email. I'd firstly like to ask um, Yenny and Mark, what advice would you give to a company that has outsourced its pattern cutting activities for years and would like to bring it back in house? Where should they begin? Um, well, I have to say that a lot of our customers are trying to do the same thing. Um, uh, many companies in the UK, they, they sent their, um, their product development um, abroad and they're, they're looking to bring it back into uh, in-house into the UK. So you're not alone if, if that's you. Um, but we tend to start um, with, um, to advise people to start with looking at one product area, so setting up a team to look at uh, a specific product area. And um, once the um, process has been perfected with that team, then we can then roll it out to all the other, pro other product areas so, um, um, to make sure that it's, it's all uh, working smoothly. Uh, so you, you also need to make sure that you've got good pattern cutters in-house so that you can uh, um, um, make sure that you have a good fit and a good, um, uh, good style. Um, to your pattern cutting, um, but also you need a really good partnership with your factories because that's really key um, when you're bringing the product development back in-house because you need to make sure that, that um, your factories have confidence in the patterns that you're producing, so, um, so yeah. Well, you mentioned pattern cutters there, um, and time and time again mm -hmm. we hear we hear about a lack of qualified pattern cutters in the market. Where can a company find pattern cutters with CAD skills? Well, I must say that, um, I mean, Lecture is now quite a widely recognized pattern cutting solution uh, around the world. And because of the number of, uh, because of, the number of our customers, uh, Lecture qualified pattern cutters should be fairly easy to find. Nevertheless, we would be very happy uh, to link any companies with our education partners and from early on what, what you can do is partner, partner with our education partners, start taking uh, placement students and obviously then you know, uh, build the relationship with the school and then employ the, um, the students when they graduate. And uh, our education partners are always very willing to form these sort of uh, industry links. Um, so that's one good route to take. Okay, thank, thank you. Um, and, and how would you recommend um, encouraging designers and pattern cutters to work closer together? Well, I mean, um, that's one thing about 3D technology. It really helps to um, form a, a better collaboration between designers and pattern cutters. Um, some companies do find that they have um, those two areas, um, those two teams working in, in silos, if you like, separately. Um, but of course, they're, 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 they have a symbiotic relationship. They, they need, to, you know, that one, they they can't live without each other. So uh, the closer they can work together, the better. Um, and um, with 3D, then obviously files can be shared much, much easier um, via email um, as well, so it, it doesn't necessarily need to be um, uh, getting together for a proper formal fit session uh, like is traditionally held. So, um, and, and we found that once, it, it, 
it can be a, a little bit um, uh, unusual to change these working practices, but once people do make the change, we've fa found that people um, really like working in this way. It's much quicker and much easier because um, they can see the progression of uh, fit comments being made um, to the style and they can make sure that everybody's happy with the style before it goes forward to be made into proper garments. So, um, so it, it tends to be uh, well received um, once people get used to the new way of working. So. All right, thank you. Um, an another Another question um, is, is what advice would you give to a company that is used to working with a regular fit model um, and one that represents their target customer really well? How could they replace that in 3D? Uh, well, there's a couple of different ways of doing that, really. Um, one option is that you can scan in your fit model or fit models and use exactly that in your virtual fitting room. Alternatively, you can alter the parametric mannequin um, and put um, to make sure the measurements are exactly the same as um, with your fit model. So you ma you make sure that your fitting sessions can be uh, with the same model. Okay, and um, while the move to 3D technology all sounds very good and very enticing, it also sounds like a massive project. Where would you suggest the company starts, and how should they manage it? Um, well, we tend to um, suggest that we we, um, we come into your company and, and analyze your product development processes to make sure that we completely understand your needs. I mean, every company is different. Everybody uh, works in a different way. So um, there's no sort of one-size-fits-all um, um, uh, process that we go through because everybody is different um, so we have to tailor our offer to, to everybody individually um, and um, then following that we um, come up with a step-by-step -step project plan um, to uh, uh, and help um, uh, to, to make sure that we, we understand exactly what the project entails um, and what areas it's going of the business it's going to uh, impact on um, and we also have um, very experienced um, uh, project managers and um, um, uh, training teams, um, personal services teams, so that we can make sure that the, um, the transition is done uh, as smoothly and easily as possible. So. And what about the trend for mass customization? Obviously, we have enabling technology such as online, e-mobile, um, and 3D digital printing technologies. Do you, do you think mass customization is set to take off, take off? And what's the best way to tackle fit issues here? Um, yeah, I mean, I think everybody would like to have their clothes made specifically for them. Um, but obviously, the um, the challenges with regards to cost uh, are a big. A, a big problem in that area, you know, obviously um, going to a tailor to make your, your clothes is a lot more expensive than going to um, a high street store. Um, hopefully technology um, going forward will, will make the whole product development um, cycle much quicker and easier. Um, so that will enable um, brands to create a more of a variety of um, of uh, of fitting garments, but also there's quite a lot of uh, research going into body shape. So um, I know that we, we have um, a, a body scanner in Debenhams in London, um, but I also believe they, they're springing up in quite a lot of malls, especially in America, um, where they're doing quite a lot of body scanning. So um, And the companies that do the body scanning are making that data available to, um, to fashion companies. So, of course, the more and more of that data that we can get through um, and we can analyze, um, obviously we can make sure that the fit is based on that data so that the clothes fit, fit better. Um, so it's just an ongoing process. Um, does that answer your question? It, it does, it does. Um, thank you very much. And, and I'm, I'm actually going to move on to some questions specifically about the 3D software. Um, Okay. Can, you import, can, you, can you import a 3D model and in what format? Um, there's a few different formats that we can import. 
Um, the main 3D model that comes from a scanner is an OBJ. Um, so we can import that, um, but there's also other, uh, other types of, um, of file formats that can be imported. Um, we, um, we recommend that the um, mannequin gets cleaned up first because sometimes you get holes, especially in places like um, between the legs or under the arms. Um, so um, to make the uh, mannequin usable in 3D, it's best to be cleaned up a bit. And also sometimes you, you get some um, distortion um, uh, happening. Um, so it, it's, it's the, 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 the more robust and the, the cleaner the shape, the better it works in 3D um, to, to, drape the mat, to drape the garment on. So, so yeah, that, that, there's, there's a few different file formats you can use. And, and can designers just use the 3D for their design work? Um, no, you need to you need to have a 2D pattern first. You have to have a 2D pattern, and then you put that on the 3D mannequin. Um, so the designer can't go unless they can make a 2D pattern themselves. Then no, or if they, it, you you have to have a pattern cutter uh, to to make the pattern first. Um, or you can work from a basic block style, uh, and but you, you do need some technical knowledge, definitely. Um, Basically, the 2D patterns are stitched on to a 3D mannequin, so you don't actually directly drape uh, your style onto the mannequin, but you stitch up, you kind of sew the garment together. So although um, designers can then up apply all the textures uh, they want, and the pattern cutter would have translated their de design idea into that model, um, normally it wouldn't be designers just designing on the 3D. And, and in the same vein, um, must Madaris patterns and 3D be used together? It's integrated. The two um, environments are integrated together, so um, yes. Solution. It's one solution. Um, um, so yes, um, the, the, the 2D pattern would need to be imported into Madaris to be used in in the 3D. Okay. In fact, the 2D and 3D um, solution is now in the it's same now package. Now together, yeah, it's all together in the same package. Okay, and and um, drilling down even deeper, um, how do you teach the pattern to alter when changing the measurements? For example, a change in the rise could change the curve or move a point. How does the software know what to change? The software wouldn't change it, the user would change it. So that's why you need a, a, a pattern cutter with technical knowledge to use the system, because they would be making the alterations. Not, not the, the system wouldn't automatically make alterations. To the, to the pattern. It's like any software program, you have to tell it what to do. Okay, okay. Um, <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and how does the software determine the fit? And, and are the fabrics... Again, it comes to and, and, 2D pattern. It's the 2D pattern first um, that, that, that creates the fit. But the, the 3D, the 3D um, part of the software is a way to test the fit of your 2D pattern. So uh, um, it, it doesn't define the fit. Uh, again, it's a way of testing the fit, just like you would test uh, the fit of a garment by making a mock-up or a initial sample. Um, it's just a way to be able to do that in um, a virtual way. And also, as you saw in, in our presentation, um, in one of the demonstration clips, there are in the mannequin um, you can apply what we call a heat map, for example, to show the different colours where it looks like the the fabric is actually stretching because it's too tight. Mm -hmm. Alternatively, what you can do is you can make the fabric transparent, which obviously you can't do in real life, so that's quite a benefit. So you can see how close to the body it actually fits. Mm -hmm. So it it really enables you to visualize how the fitting is um, um, in that 3D model. Yeah. But once you've identified any fit issues, then you would have to change the pattern manually um, in, in the, either in the 3D environment or the 2D environment. So it, it wouldn't do it automatically. And, and can it manage all kinds of stitches? Types of stitches, did you say? Stitches, yes, yeah, stitches. 
Um, yes, there's a big library of all different types of stitches on there. Um, uh, um, uh, uh, do you mean like top stitching? Yes, yeah, just just um, yes, different types of stitches. Yeah, the the top stitching is is added like a um, um, like an image file basically. So you can um, uh, on on the top of the garment. So um, you can there's a, a library already included, but you can also create your own um, using uh, using other uh, types of software. So um, or you can actually create different um, variations within uh, Madaris itself. So, um, so yes, there's uh, lots of different types of top stitching. And, and there's also a question, are the fabrics tested? And if yes, how do you test them? <laughs> That's a good one. Um, the, the, fabric, the fabric characteristics, I, assume, I think you mean, the, um, there's a library of about 150 fabric characteristics on the system already, um, which have been developed over the last 10 years since, since we've been developing the software um, and they've all been tested um, at our um, headquarters in Bordeaux. Um, how they do that I'm not exactly sure to be, to be quite honest but we can find out and, and get back to you about that. Okay, um, thank, you. thank you. But There's lots of different types of fabric from jerseys um, through to wovens of all different weights and, and types, so uh, there's a big range of fabric characteristics to create different drapes and different effects. And, and a final question um, before we wrap up is um, a kind of crystal ball question. Um, how do you see virtual product development affecting the apparel industry into the future? Well, that's a good question. Um, well, we see that it really would have like two main goals. Um, one is obviously um, for this technology is to speed up the process. Um, like we discussed earlier in the presentation, there's a lot of pressure to do everything quicker. So this type of technology is really there to speed up the process and facilitate the product development be even quicker than before. Uh, the other one is um, to make sure that any unnecessary expense of excessive sampling is cut down. And eventually, eventually what we think that might happen um, is that physical um, prototypes made with fabric and mock-ups will be vastly reduced and fashion companies will have the confidence to do that without, fear, that without a fear that they will sacrifice the quality. So mass uh, real uh, re reduction in in uh, in real samples and mock-ups, um, a process that is quicker and um, uh, and more cost-effective. Yeah, thank you very much, Yeni. Um, I think that's probably a, a great place to end our webinar today. Um, and I'd like to thank you very much and and Mark Powell as well, um, and of course yeah. everyone who's been listening as well. And I'd just like to remind you again that an audio-visual version of the webinar will be available at juststyle.com forward slash webinars, and we'll also email you a link to it. And finally, I'd like to say thank you and goodbye. Bye.